when starting out, this is how I imagined UX to look like. I've been seeing more and more people online posting their process and the majority what they shared was exactly that. So intentionally when I started, I thought that great UX is just about proper wireframes. And this is true to a degree as clients were paying me money so that meant it brought some value and clarity to their product or website. I didn't have any strong arguments why they should use this or that solution. It was just my gut feeling. And it was more like, uh, we shouldn't use six tabs, the search is not reachable, that's why it's down at the bottom. We shouldn't use sign up and sign in because they're confusing terms. Very simple stuff. When you see it, everybody could have done it. But time has proven that it's hard to make complicated products actually usable. So how do we make products that are complicated, flexible and most importantly usable? Let's get back to that wireframe I showed you. It intentionally looks the way it does so people don't get hang up in the way it looks and can focus on how it interacts. The problem is that my mom can make a decision about a wireframe and an argument why this is the right way and you know the thing, a stopped clock is right two times a day. So what was my true value as a UX designer? Pause the video right now and write down what is the difference between making something and making it usable. I don't want you to write down in too much details, write as much as you want or as little as you want. Just pause the video and come back here in two minutes. Counting down. Dennis, why are you giving me to write something? Can we just get to the point? And yeah, we'll get there. But we need to understand why people make those poor decisions about user experience so you can start recognizing them. Actually, you start recognizing them and avoid them in your own products. This can be a blessing and a curse once you realize it. You will never stop seeing UX pitfalls. I think they fall into four categories. Lazy, simplistic, feature thinking, and running with the first solutions. So if we have to break it down, I would say that lazy I don't want to mean you, but this is more of a generic type. We are lazy as we like empathy to consider things through users' eyes. This is important in every step of your career. If you don't grab people's attention and keep them interested, nobody will care. This will lead to bad performances at work, churn clients, lower engagement with customers, etc. Remember, as with anything with this course or your whole UX career in general, you person watching this, you are not the audience. Every time you think about something, you want to put yourself in user shoes. How can you grab their attention? Don't use confetti everywhere. Like, yeah, it grabs attention, but don't use a confetti pop everywhere. You need to tap into people's emotion and some reaction is better than no reaction. Your main job as a UX designer or a product designer or a UI designer is to see the experiences through users' eyes. Not yours, not your boss, not your PM, the end user. Second one I said was simplicity. This is most likely the hardest of them all because as designers, we must select what stays on the screen and what must go. So this is a project I worked on last year. And as you can see on the tiny mobile screen, we had to do a lot of things to prioritize for. They were trying for you to find the store, download the barcode, change the amount and much, much more. My job was just to go down this page and understand what is necessary and what's not. Keep in mind that stakeholders will come back to you and always give you 150 reasons why it's stuff there, why do we need it, uh, you should keep it, dude, like we have business partners that want it, yeah, no, it's not always the case. People build stuff and they want features to be seen and your job is to figure out what brings the most value to customers. So you're going to need to have those difficult conversations between you and stakeholders and even engineers. Uh, why should we remove something or change it? Designing a simple solution takes more work than designing a complex solution. Because designing it complex, you can just cram everything out there and call it a day. But if you want to design it simple, you just need to be really mindful of what features goes where and how do we best use those. Feature thinking, it's easy to know your product so well that you can no longer imagine it all. Can you imagine Uber without the map? I would say no, right? So how does Uber look the first time you saw it? 
This is because the more deep you get into a field, the more knowledge you collect. However, in order to make great experiences, you need to have a beginner's mindset. Can you imagine like how hard it is to work on something for three years and you need to step back and it was like, oh, what would a first time user actually do? This is especially true for large enterprise companies where they try to do everything for everybody. So here is a project I worked on and we're about to create an automation and people absolutely love the product, but they complained it's a little bit too technical. When doing the user interviews, engineers let me to call this model an exchange while people were calling it pop-up. After deeper analyzing, I realized that it doesn't bring any external value to them and we reframed our wording. We also did change the way that people can link between two elements. If you want to stop thinking like a pro, just sit back and start looking at what your users are doing and how are they looking. I think you're noticing a pattern here. Uh, don't argue, try to prove a point, uh, point them in the right direction and just build a product that you hear. And that's exactly the point, like look at what people are doing and try to do it better and improve it for them. Don't put your ego there. Now the last problem I see a lot of people do is that they run with the first solution. The problem here is that Good design often doesn't happen with the first idea you come up with. Sometimes it happens, it's like one in a thousand years maybe, but majority of the times you need to explore a lot of variations, options, interactions to see what actually is best. And why is this important? As when you sacrifice the best possible solution early on, it's highly unlikely that you'll be improving on it later on. You might want to try a new tab, an icon menu, uh, an overlay here and there, a lot of different options that you can go with the idea of your solution. You just need to keep exploring what you find best. You, you need to be okay to butcher good solutions in the search for the great solution. What should be your takeaway from this lesson? If something works, this doesn't mean it works well. And a lot of teams appreciate software that really works well, but if your team, client or company doesn't, you need to sell the value of good design to your team, as you are the expert, not anybody else. Do you know how Mike from marketing will just put for a new marketing campaign and just start doing that, regardless if they have the budget or not? You should be that for UX design. From now on, selling good UX to your company is your new job title. Well, technically not, but you get the point. 